from the Thai Cats Audio Network. This is Thai Cats Today with Louie B. Yes, it is Thai Cats Today for a Tuesday, November the 9th, 2021. Thanks for checking us out on the Thai Cats Audio Network. And uh, while you're here, or wherever you found us, make sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode of this show or any other other great shows we have for you here, including a brand new episode of the Coach O Show with Luke Tasker dropping today. So go find that uh, wherever you found this one. And like I said, subscribe so you never miss an episode. Big show coming up here. We got uh, Coach Sal stopping by, John Salvantis, for some uh, Tuesday salutations. Uh, we're going to hear from Don Jackson, and we're going to hear from Coach O. Orlando Steinauer, as we do every day here on Tie Cats Today, the official podcast of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Um, we will run through the Tie Cats injury report for you as uh, they did return to practice yesterday. Uh, and I can let you know that Carrie Brooks was limited. Nick Cross was limited. Darius Rocco did not practice. Uh, Felix Garan Gauthier, who is coming off the six game injured list, uh, he was limited. Wes Hills was a full participant. Ted Laurent, Simone Lawrence, Jordan Murray, all limited. Tom Schnitzler, full participant. David Watford, a full participant. And John Yarbrough was limited. So, some good news on the Tie Cats injury front as uh, Simone Lawrence, well, limited, but uh, I think that might be a, a bit of a veteran day for him as. Uh, he was back out there today, but uh, Jordan Murray and John Yerbrough, uh, two guys who have missed some time on the offensive line, uh, both limited, and uh, we'll keep an eye on that throughout the week to see if they will uh, be ready to go for Friday. Uh, and meanwhile, obviously, Darius Sirocco not practicing yesterday, uh, not a, a great sign for his status uh, when it comes to, to Friday's game. So we'll keep our eye on that throughout the week. Um, Interesting stat here that I uh, I threw at at Coach Yo, uh, and you'll hear his response to it. But I want to make sure you have it here because the Toronto Argonauts are doing a pretty good job pinning their opponents deep off of kickoffs. Uh, they're doing a great job, in fact, uh, of their forty one kickoffs the Argos have made, twenty six of them have had their opponents start inside the 30. So that's a conversion rate of 63%. No other team is at 50. Uh, Calgary, the next closest, at 47. Hamilton, in case you're wondering, uh, pins their opponent behind the 30 after kickoffs 43% of the time. The league average is 36. But the Argos do it 63% of the time. And I asked Coach... That, you know, we've talked about it a lot when it comes to hidden yards. But I asked Coach whether, you know, with that stat, whether special teams, avoiding penalties on special teams, has an added emphasis at practice and in the meeting rooms heading into Friday's game. Yeah, I think penalties in the return games are a killer, Louis. Uh, part of, you know, the Argos' uh, achievements in that category is the fact that uh, – BD kicks the ball so damn far that, you know, you're not fielding that thing at the 10 or the 15. Like, you're having to make up those yards. So that's definitely been a weapon for them. Plus, they do a great great job of covering, and that's definitely an advantage. There's no doubt that drive start average matters. And so we'll do our best to obviously get it out the, as far as we can. And if you do take a penalty, it, it just makes it, uh, makes it extremely tough on an offense. I wouldn't, I won't speak for them, but I, you know, I wouldn't say we're completely different. You know, there's some familiarity, obviously, when you play a team four times, but, you know, we're evolving and, you know, we'd like to think we're getting better in some phases and, and uh, you know, but again, there's a test and that test will come on Friday. So I'm just looking forward to see where we're at. Obviously, we know we'll have our hands full. They're, uh, they're leading the division for a reason. They found ways to win, and uh, it's going to be two teams that uh, it's, it's going to be fun. Well, we just felt like we had a little bit more time uh, between games, to be honest with you. Uh, when we were coming back from Edmonton, we were traveling. This uh, week posed a different set of challenges in its own way. So, you know, when we were afforded uh, an extra practice day, if you will, not really extra, but three days uh, we went ahead and exercised that, and uh, we'll taper it back, obviously, tomorrow. 
with a win, uh, you clinch a home playoff berth, doesn't necessarily clinch first place, but was having a, a home playoff game a, a goal at the start of the season? It is, but the first goal, RJ, is, is always to get in the playoffs, and then you start checking other boxes, because uh, if you're not in, you don't have a chance to win, and uh, not very often, but there's been a, a couple of isolated times in my career as a player and as a coach where we haven't qualified for the playoffs, and uh, that's not where you want to be. And so after you've checked that box, absolutely. You know, you do want to play in front of in front of your home fans and whatnot, but that can't be the, the sole focus and motivation early on. Uh, we know what's at stake, but uh, we're going to remain focused on, on the task at hand. We know the results that if we handle our business and we're on the winning side, we, we know all the benefits that come with that, but that only comes with the focus and preparation beforehand. That is the head coach of the Hamilton Tiger Cats, Orlando Steiner, as we caught up with him after practice. As always, if you want the full scrums, full comments from coach and select players after practice, uh, you can go to tightcats.ca. Uh, today we spoke with coach, we spoke with Don Jackson, who we'll hear from in just a second, and we also spoke with Jagarit Davis. Uh, so for the uh, full comments from after practice, you can always go to tightcats.ca uh, with questions and answers. You can check them out uh, from there. I mentioned Don Jackson. He has really turned it on as of late, taking an opportunity to get into the game and running with it. Let's see what I did there. Uh, he's got 200 yards on the ground in his last two games, including the touchdown. And almost as impressively was, or as impressive, uh, was his 56 yards in the air that he caught. Of course, he's going to want the one back. Uh, that was just off his fingertips, but he did finish the game uh, with four catches for 56 yards and uh, caught up with him after practice and just had to know what's what's been clicking, what's been going right to see these kind of results. Um, up front, um, I'm, I'm surrounded by a bunch of guys that's, uh, um, one, they all work hard. They all trying to, trying, to, trying to have their best foot forward. And we're just trying to take the next step together as an offense and, it just happens to me be me in the, in the backfield right now. And um, up front, we're just pushing guys. We're being physical. We're, we're making things happen up front. And if, if we get gaps and we and we can get some push up front, that, that already just sets the tone for a game. So um, it's, a, it's a product of everybody. Um, it's the game plan. It's the trust that guys are putting into me. It's the trust that I have on the guys next to me and in front of me. Um, and we just – and we work really, really hard. So um, I think if we continue to do that, um, that's just going to keep setting us up to have to, uh, have more success. Um, it's just because we, I mean, we don't have any, any control on on, on kind of like there's just so many uncontrollable factors in this game, um, just in football and life in general. Um, and I think if we kind of like keep that that mindset, the next man mindset, as in um, not just um, not in like any disrespectful way, like like next man up isn't like oh the next man is a step down or anything like that. It's just we don't we don't expect to to lose anything with the next man. We expect the next man to play to that standard that is held in the room and for the offense, for the team, for the defense, no matter what it is. So that's all we try to make sure we do is make sure that every single guy is ready to go at any given time. Um, he's he's a great leader, man. He's. Um, he also gives you like this kind of sense of security and calmness in the huddle. Um, so like even when things kind of get kind of frantic around us, he has this uh, this like this sense to be able to kind of just reel guys in. Um, and and he can and I think he's always he does a great job being who we need him to be for the moment. If we need him to be a guy that's uh, like that, that gets on our ass, that kind of kind of needs to, to get on everybody, he'll do that. If he needs to come in a different kind of fashion and kind of come in more as a more of a submissive way, um, he will. Um, he's really he's he's water out there, man. He's water for sure. He's water. That is Don Jackson as we caught up with him after practice, talking there about uh, Jeremiah Masoli at the end, a little next man up mentality. Uh, you can always put that one in the Tie Cats uh, tip jar. Uh, you know, if you if you play along at home, I would say the Tie Cats drinking game, uh, but I I would not encourage that. Uh, but the Tie Cats dip tip jar. Uh, every time you hear next man up, uh, you know, put a quarter in there. You might have a, a healthy fund by the end of the season. Uh, but it's a mentality that's preached here. 
And uh, you heard Don talk about that, but obviously Don Jackson having a, a great couple of games. Uh, 256 combined yards uh, on the ground in the air uh, and that touchdown. So big, uh, big performance for him, and uh, he'll look to keep it going against the Toronto Argonauts on Friday. Uh, for more on that game and to look back on last Friday's game, we bring in Coach Sal, John Salavantis, for some Tuesday salutations. And uh, Coach Sal, appreciate this as always, but I wanted to get your thoughts on Friday night's game as you know, it went down to the wire, but uh, do, do you feel like the score was as close as maybe the game was, even, you know, going down to that last pass in the end zone? Well, any win is a good win, so we start with that. But when you look at the uh, the month of October for the Ticats, they're 3-2 and two in the month of October. They've scored an average of around 28 points per game, and they've given up 18 points a game. So defensively, they're getting the job done. Offensively, they're taking advantage of those turnovers that the D is giving them and scoring points off of those turnovers. So let's be realistic. Those uh, three teams that they beat uh, were eight and, what, uh, 28. The next two games are playoff teams that are 16 wins and eight losses. So it's going to get a lot tougher. So, you know, let's put October behind us. Let's look ahead to November and say we're in the playoff picture. And we certainly have destiny in our own hands as far as the Ticats are concerned. They should be able to get first place. All they have to do is beat the Toronto Argonauts. It's it's a big game on Friday. I want to stick with uh, last Friday before before we look ahead because I mean for the twelfth game in a row I think it was a different offensive line that we had seen for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Um, you know, guys were injured. It looks like they're getting some good news with uh, with uh, with Murray coming off the six game injured list. But what did you make of the offensive line's performance uh, on Friday night? Well, I thought they did very well. I mean, they played against a pretty good defensive group. And they, they held their own against that group. Uh, Mazzoli made a couple of runs in that game that were, were well done uh, by him. He's going to have to do that again when they go against Toronto and Saskatchewan because those two lines are better than Ottawa's and the Lions and the Elks. I really believe that. I think the two upcoming games are going to be much tougher. But at the same time, Woods Manny has really filled in well at that uh, offensive uh, center position, and, and Revenberg continues to be Revenberg. He's still one of the best offensive guards in, in the league. Having Murray back, you know, hopefully he's healthy, and, and uh, that'll help out. Van Zyl, as a veteran, has got to be able to talk this team through this next couple of ball games. Uh, 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 you know, when you look at the offensive line, you look at, you know, whether the quarterback's getting sacked and you look at whether the running back is getting down the field. And uh, for the second game in a row, Don Jackson, a very productive outing. Sean Thomas Erlington getting some yards as well. You've preached about it, I think, for years and years, how important a running game is in the CFL. Do, the, do the, you think the Ticats have found what they're looking for uh, with Don Jackson and Sean Thomas Erlington kind of in that platoon spot? You know, LB, I, I really think that uh, Don Jackson was the difference in the ball game. There's no question in my mind that running for 80 some yards uh, off of what 12 carries or something like that, and then uh, you know Sean coming in and being able to get a couple of uh, carries himself for good yardage. Uh, the key is really will they continue to play call the run game? If they continue to play call the run game, the run game is so important in playoff picture. When you get into November, as the weather turns colder and things get a little bit uh, dicey on the field, the run game is what keeps you alive. And Don Jackson, as I said, I, I think was a difference in the ball game. And I think Mazzoli taking off when he does, he doesn't like to run a lot, but when he does, he makes good yardage. Uh, Brandon Banks had a touchdown. Uh, I can't believe it took him 12 games to get, and I'm sure he can't believe it either, 11 games to get uh, his first touchdown of the season. Uh, but he also led the team in, in receiving yards. How important do you think that game was for Brandon Banks himself to, to just kind of get back into the, the swing of things and, and find the back of the end zone? 
Well, I'm sure Brandon really felt good about uh, his play. He had six catches in the ball game. One was a big touchdown catch uh, where you saw his speed uh, at its very best uh, going down the field, making a move towards the post and then straightening up and, and getting a beautiful ball thrown to him by Mazzoli. So Banks being Banks, you know, he's a competitor. And, and as a 33-year-old, you, you've got to be wary of, of how much you play uh, coming into the playoffs. But once you're in the playoffs, you're a veteran, and everybody's expecting you to do a good job. And I know Brandon Banks will step up to the plate. And especially because, I mean, there isn't a ton of experience with that Ticats receiving room outside of Banks, right? I mean, with Braylon down, I mean, I think you, you, we can both agree we've been impressed with what we've seen from Tim White. Jalen Ackland continues to build a, a great CFL resume in his first two seasons. Um, and just kind of that whole room. Uh, what, what have you seen from, from the receivers and, and Masoli? Because they really seem to be developing really good chemistry as of late. Well, you know, in the BC game, BC played mostly a zone. They dropped nine people into that secondary. And what has to happen for the receiving group uh, is that the receiver has to know where that open window is. And he has to be able to get into that open window and settle down. That takes experience. And that's where banks, uh, in my opinion, uh, can really be an asset in, the, in ball games in which there's zone play. Now, Mazzoli had to be very patient with what he did. And we talked about the O-line. The O-line gave him time to find those receivers inside of those nine defensive backs that were back there. But that's because they only rushed three and you had five blockers that, that could handle it. <clears throat> so realistically, when we go against Toronto or Saskatchewan, you're not going to see that zone. You're going to see a lot of man cover and you're going to see a lot of blitz uh, up front. So things are going to be a little bit different, but the receiving group has to adjust to what they have in front of them, whether it be man for man or zone type look. Let's look ahead to Friday. It'll be the fourth time the Ticats will face the Argos and, um, you know, possibly likely, hopefully setting up a, a fifth matchup down the road. Uh, but what can you take from those previous three games against the Argos? If anything, one of them, you know, the first one was, more than two months ago. The last one was a month ago. Is there anything you can look at those three games to, to try and build a game plan for this one? Well, obviously, you know, you've got enough tape on, on the Argos now to know what they're doing. They did uh, change their defense a little bit uh, since uh, they played them last. But at the same time, uh, their offense is predicated on the drop back pass by uh, McLeod, Bethel McLeod. And what you've got to do is you've got to get him off that spot. Now, that goes back to that defensive front with Teddy Laurent, Wynn, and Jacquard uh, uh, Davis, and Hauser on the other side. They've got to get him off that spot. And by that, I mean they have to move him from the interior where he sets up and force him to go right or left. And, and when they do that, he's not as good a quarterback as when he can sit in the pocket and read uh, the defense uh, in front of them. So given all of that, you know, I, I think, you know, with Toronto, Hamlin's always played with Toronto. You, you see a cat play with a mouse. That's the way I see them play with Toronto. You know, let them go for a little bit and then capture them again. Let them go just a little bit further and then capture them again. This is going to be one of those big games where I think the Ticats capture the cat uh, or the mouse and do a great job for it. Uh, well, and you have to think that the, the Thai Cats are motivated after losing to them at home. The Argos go into this one undefeated at home. I mean, the Thai Cats haven't forgotten how the last two games against the Argos have ended. Well, no. And, and the Argos uh, had better send some Christmas gifts to two kickers, uh, one from BC Lions and one from uh, uh, the Red Blacks, because that's how they won those ball games. Uh, by those two kickers failing to do their job. Uh, to me, you know, this again comes down to what uh, the rivalry is all about. And, and that is, you know, when you go to Toronto or Toronto comes to Hamilton, expect a good football game and expect some unexpected things to happen during the game. Coach Sal, appreciate it as always. Thank you for doing this. Love checking in with you. Well, it's always good to talk to you, Louis. Have a good one.
All right, my thanks to Coach Sal for joining me and my thanks to you as well. Appreciate it as always. Make sure to join us tomorrow, same time, same place, right here on the Ticats Audio Network for that very same Ticats Audio Network. I'm Louis B. Hoping you have a great day. Ticats Today with Louis B. Subscribe, like, and get your Ticats fix every weekday.